Well, hi there, and welcome back. I think you learned some pretty neat stuff you really probably didn't even know in video 26 about coding systems and about some background about how it was developed and why it was developed. And it's used all over the country now. Uh, as, as it said in the video, back when I was a, a kid, uh, you, you didn't have codes on uh, products you bought in the grocery store. And there was no scanning going on in the grocery store. And people used to cheat like buggers in the grocery store because they would put the stickers of the prices on different items that were cheaper. They would take the cheaper sticker and stick it on there. And you know it was a, it was a nightmare to be a cashier back then in in the in the fifties and sixties, but uh, that all changed and now it's a much more honest system as you can have seen in the last video I just uh, put together for you, and uh, hopefully you appreciate the fact that this stuff is in place to help us. Okay, so let's go on and practice a little bit about what we talked about or what I talked about in video 26 right now. So let's go to it and take a look. This is a universal product code for gray Rust-Oleum spray paint. Verify that it's correct. Now, what does that mean to verify that it's correct? Well, what did you learn about in the video? You learned that if you multiply uh, this code out by certain numbers, right, that the code should add up to zero mod 10, right? Okay, so the code that we use for a UPC code that we multiply by is we multiply by 3131313131 going all the way across. We get the answers, convert them all to mod 10s, and we should get zero mod 10 for it to be an accurate uh, code. So here we go. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Now in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to get out your sheet called group work 26. And we're going to practice some problems on group work 26. These are not on any sheet. So you can kind of just watch me right now, but I won't do too many here. And then we will go right into practicing on group work 26. So you get good practice on this material. All right. So I multiply these out. Zero, two, zero, zero, 18. I underline double digit numbers usually. Six, zero, 24. 1, 24, and 9. Okay, now I go back through any two-digit number, I change it to a mod 10 number. What the heck? So this is an 8, this is a 4, and this is a 4. Now I'm going to add all those numbers up, and hopefully they should end in a 0, right? If they do, we know the answer is 0 mod 10. So let's add them. That's 2, and 8 is 10, 16, 16 and 6 is 22, 26, 27, and 4 is 31, and 9 is 40. And 40 is the same thing as 0 mod 10. So we know that this code is probably correct. Remember, these codes are cool because they have the name of the company that made them in the code. They have the exact item, the gray spray paint, all right? I mean, it's all wrapped up in this code. And when it, it is scanned at the cash register, the cashier, if they look up the code or look at what it, it types, they know exactly what you're buying, all right? And it's implanted right on the object. You cannot stick it on there. It's on there to stay, all right? So this protects everybody, all right? So let's go on. All right, given this UPC code below for simply orange OJ, determine what the missing value X must be in order for this code to comply with international standards. Now you notice I have already here multiplied the code 313131 by everything, okay? And you'll notice that uh, I have here 
changed the 15 to a 5. And then what I've done is I've gone across and gotten an equation here. All right. So let's see. My equation has the 3x in it right here. It comes from this situation multiplying. We don't know what x is. That's what we want to find. And if I add all these digits together, 2, 5, 5, 4, 6, and 3, they do add up to 25. Okay? So, now, this is not a normal algebraic equation. So you got to think a little differently when you go to solve this. Okay? And here's how I'd like you to think. All right? Now, let me see. What does 3x, whatever x is, what does it have to end in in order to make 25 when it's added by whatever 3x is? When it, they're added together, it comes out with a zero. Now, let's see. Wouldn't it have to be a five? Because if it's a 5, 25 plus 5 would end in a 0, right? Okay? So when I get 3x, I just have to make sure it ends in a 5. Now, if I can't figure that out in my head, that's okay. You can just put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 in for x until you get a number that ends in 5. But I think you can see that if you put a 5 in for x, 3 times 5 is 15, right? 15 ends in a 5. So if x has a value of 5, right, the sentence would read 15 plus 25 has to equal 0 mod 10, right? And that's true, right? Because 15 and 25 is 40, and 40 ends in a 0. And it is equal to 0 mod 10, right? So x has to be 5. Now, x is not 15. x has to be 5. So all you have to do is think that way every time you get to the end of one of these coding questions. Okay? Not too bad, huh? All right? Let's go on. Let's try another one. Okay. Now, this is a bank routing number. It's for Niagara county uh, federal credit union. Credit unions are the same thing as banks. This is the routing number that occurs on the lower left-hand corner of all of their checks. Is it the correct number? Well, we don't know for sure if it's a correct number, but does it need, meet the codes for international standards? Now, what do we multiply by? And I will always tell you what to multiply by. I will never make you guess that. It's always 31313131314 UPC codes for bank routing numbers. It's 739, 739, 739. So if I whip 739 underneath here over and over again, and I multiply these out, when I obtain the final answer, it should be 0 mod 10, right? Well, let's see. 14, 6, 18. 21, 24, 9, 14, 12, 72. Well, those two-digit numbers, I'm going to change them all to one-digit numbers, mod 10. So this is a 4, this is an 8, 1, 4, 4, 2, and 2. Now, I, sometimes I screw these up adding across, so you got to be very careful, all right? I usually add them both ways to make sure I'm right. All right. 4 and 6 is 10. 18, 19 and 4 is 23. And 9 is 32, 36, 37, 38, 39. Ah, I got 40. So it appears this code's okay. It actually adds up to 0 mod 10. So we know the code is correct for this bank routing number. Remember, the last digit in these codes is called uh, the check digit, okay? So the check digit is always fixed so that it makes it come out 0 mod 10, both in UPC codes 
and in bank routing numbers. So the first group of numbers, for example, in a bank routing number, the first eight digits on there are used to identify the bank, and then the very last digit has to be correct so that the thing adds up to zero mod 10 when you multiply by 739, 739, and 739, okay? All right, let's go on. All right, this bank routing number is for Fleet Bank. Fleet Bank's gone now. It used to be a bank in the Buffalo area. Uh, I believe Bank of America has taken it over, okay? I think another bank took it over before Bank of America, but I could be wrong about that, but Fleet's no longer here. Is their routing number still here? I don't know. Uh, it might be used for uh, a, a new bank now, but I'm not sure about that. But this was Fleet Bank's number. And notice I'm missing the last digit, which is called the check digit. I want to know what that has to be. So I do 739, 739, 739. Zero, six, 18, zero, 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 seven, six, and nine X. Okay, what's my equation gonna be? Nine X plus, all right, what's the rest of the numbers add up to? Remember, don't add the nine in in front of the nine X. Six and seven is 13, ooh, but this is 18, so I'm gonna make it an eight. Six and seven is 13, and eight is 21, and six is 27. All right, I'll add it the other way just to be sure. Six and eight is 14, and seven is 21, and six is 27, so I know I'm all right. This has got to come out to zero mod 10, okay? So we go back to the same process I mentioned a little while ago. Three or nine times X has to end in what number? So that 27, the seven on 27, when added to it, will produce a zero on the end of the number. Okay. Well, let's see. If I put zero in for X, the answer would be zero, no good. If I put a one in for X, it would be nine, nine and 27 is 36, no good. You can see I could go through each number if I want to, but I think you can see it has to end in a what? A three, doesn't it? The nine X has to end in a three. Now what number times nine ends in a three? Hopefully you've come up with nine. Nine times seven is 63. 63 plus 27 would add up to 90, which is zero mod 10. So X has to be what? X has to have a value of seven. So the check digit on this bank routing number when the bank was in existence was a seven. Let's go on. This bank routing number is for Wyoming County Bank and Wyoming County Bank is still alive and well. There are still a lot of customers that go to Wyoming County Bank. All right. And uh, so let's see what the second to the last digit should be. Seven, three, nine is what I use to check it out and find out my missing piece. Okay, I multiply zero. 6, 18, 21, 0, 81, 21 again, 3x, and 18. Now, by the way, in a few minutes, you're going to practice some of these with me. Okay, I'm hopefully you're watching me carefully right now and getting a good understanding of this material. Okay, so this is an 8. This is a 1, 1, one and an eight. All right, let's add across. 14, 15, 16, 17, and eight, I believe is 25. I'm gonna add the other way. Also, I have a three X there, right? Eight plus one is nine, 10, 11, 19, 25. Looks like I'm okay. 
SD equals zero mod 10. Okay, what number times three gives me a number that ends in what? Five, when I add it to 25, it's gotta be a five. And just like the problem we did recently, it's gonna have to be X equals five, right? Because three times five is 15, 15 plus 25 is 40, which would give us zero mod 10. So the value we need for that number is X equals five. Okay, so here's group work 26. And we're gonna do group work 26 together, the front of it, all right, together. I'm going to assign the back of it for you to complete for me uh, tonight for homework. Okay, and tomorrow we will go over it. Okay, to make sure you got it right. Okay, so we're going to do this front together. Remember, I told you the UPC codes are always 313131. Three, three, Over here, I showed you that the bank routing numbers are always 739, 739, 739. Let's try out this UPC code. Could I have an object that's for sale in a store that is all fives like this. By the way, uh, I just want to say there are UPC codes that are shorter than the UPC codes I'm going over. Every once in a while you'll run into an item which has a much shorter UPC code than the ones we're using, but most all of them have these long codes, okay? They need all those numbers to be able to identify themselves, okay? Three, one, we'd run out of numbers otherwise. There's a lot of items in the world that are for sale. All right, here we go. So this is 15, five, 15, five, 15, five, 15, five, 15, five, 15, and five. Wait a minute, all these 15s are fives, aren't they, mod 10? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve fives is sixty, right? You know this is a possibility to be a UPC code. I've never seen a UPC code anywhere in any store where all the numbers are exactly the same, right? But it could exist, right? As we have shown you here. Okay, let's go to problem two. This is Molson Canadian Light, an excellent beer. Give it a shot sometime. Molson Canadian Light, okay? I want to know what the digit that is the fourth digit up here has to be in Molson Canadian Light. So I put my three one three one three ones down. You do the same right now on your sheet, please. Now I'm going to assume you have done that. Now what I would like you to do is to multiply each of them. Put your answers down and then you can check them with mine. I have a very bad habit of multiplying a number times zero and thinking the zero is a one. So I have to be very careful with that. Now, there's only one two digit number here. It's that 24, which becomes a four, and I just have an X. So my equation will read X plus what? All right, you add one way, I'll add the other way, and let's see what we come up with. Now, there you go. I added one way and got one answer. And now I'm adding the other way and getting a different answer. I got 28 one way and 30 the other. 7, 12, 12, 6, 18, of course, 22, and 6 is 28. So my 30 was wrong. That's why I check both directions so I don't screw it up. All right, so X plus 28, SD equals zero, mod 10. Hey, you know what? 
This one's really easy because there's nothing being multiplied, right? Times x here, correct? Since there's nothing here being multiplied by x, I just need a number for x that when I add it to 28, gives me a zero on the end, right? And what's that going to have to be? It's going to have to be x equals 2 because 28 plus 2 gives me 30. And that's 0 mod 10. So we've answered question 2. Oh, look at this. Wegman's spring water again. Bring back an example of a problem we discussed before. <laughs> yeah, we discussed that quite a bit, didn't we? With that water bottle question we had. All right, again, we are looking for the digit that is x, the fourth from the end. We're going to do 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1. Hopefully you're doing this with me right now and practicing. Okay, I'm going to shut up and multiply these, and I want you to do the same. I have two two-digit numbers, which I'm going to make single digits in mod 10. And now I'm going to add across. Hopefully not screw it up. I think I got 45. Let me go the other way. <laughs> no, I didn't get it that way this time. All right, so let me try it again. Twenty-one, twenty-eight, twenty-six, thirty-seven. I got forty-four one way, forty-five the other. Seven, eight, sixteen, twenty-three, twenty-six. Uh, 34, 40, oh man, <laughs> I am not doing well with this at all. So, ah, my gosh, 7, 8, 16, 23, 26, 34, 40, 46, 6 and 6 are 12, 20, hope you don't have this trouble, 23, 30, Oh, I probably was forgetting this number. 38, 39, 46. Hey, I think I scored twice here. So I think we're good with 46. Okay. If I'm wrong, you can shoot me a text and say, hey, moron, you messed it up. All right. Zero mod 10 I need, right? Okay. I should be putting that here like this, not like that. 0 mod 10. Okay. All right. What does 3x have to end in? I believe you can see it would be a 4, right? What number times 3 ends in a 4? I believe it's 8, right? So x has to equal 8 because 3 times 8 is 24 and 46 gives us 70, which is 0 mod 10. Okay? All right, let's go on. Determine the missing number in this UPC code for tops original half and half. All right? Get your 313131 down there, please. Multiply, please. Change your two-digit numbers to single-digit numbers. And now please add across. Okay. 
Look at the confidence I'm showing here, writing down the 38, assuming I know how to add. Now let's check the other way. 14, 16, 20, 24, and 14 is 38. I think I'm okay. All right. So, what number does 3x have to end in so that when I add it to 38, I get 0 mod 10? It's got to end in a what? A 2, right? What number times 3 ends in a 2? Wouldn't it be 4? x equals 4 because the number I need is a 2 and 3 times 4 is 12. Since 12 and 38 gives me 0, I'm looking good, right? So x in this case would have to be a 4. Determine whether or not this potential bank routing number is correctly configured. Could it be all sixes? Well, remember, in this we're multiplying by 739, 739, 739. So get those down there, please. Multiply those out. I believe they're all going to be two-digit numbers. All right. Okay, so this will be two, eight, four, two, eight, four, two, eight, and four. If I add the first three together, I get 14, and there's three total uh, configurations exactly the same. Uh, so 14 times three is what? 42, right? This all adds up to 42. Could this be a bank routing number then? No, it could not. It does not meet international standards. Therefore, it would be rejected and would not be allowed to be used. Okay? All right. Let's check out the checks digit on this one. Okay, for this bank routing number. What's it got to be? 739... 739, 739. Zero, six. Multiply them out, please. Now, some of the numbers are easier because there's zeros in them. And of course, when there's a zero in them, it makes our computation uh, situation a heck of a lot easier, right? But they're not all like that, unfortunately. So. All right, so let's see. There's a two-digit one here and here. So if I add these together, it's 6 and 9 is 15, 16. I believe it's 17 if I haven't screwed up. All right, so 9x plus 17 has to equal 0 mod 10. What does 9x have to end in to make 17 n in a zero. I think you can see it's got to end in a three, right? Because 17 plus three is 20, right? Okay, would you agree with that? Good. Now, if it has to end in the three, what number times nine ends in a three? 63, right? Remember, X can only be a single digit cannot be a double digit number. So X has to be here, seven, seven times nine is 63, and 63 plus 17 does add up to 80, which is zero mod 10. Okay, now I can't remember how many problems are on the front of the sheet because I have to take a quick peek and look. All right, I think we already did one of the problems on the back, right? So, uh, let's see. Oh, no, we are now ready to start the back, I guess. So, this is 
um, seven, eight, and so forth to the end of the back of the sheet is what I want you to try tonight on your own, okay? So I want you to make sure you finish up group worksheet 26 for homework tonight. Now, you're about to take video quiz 26. To make it easier for you, I have put in with this a worksheet, not for the first problem, but starting with the second problem, I have put in a worksheet with all the numbers written down on it to make your life easier so you don't have to do so much work. All right, so make sure you use the worksheet that comes with video quiz 26 to do the quiz. I don't need you to send me the worksheet or to send me the video quiz. All I need is your answer choices. And I believe I put an extra credit question on this uh, document as well. So there will be an extra credit and you'll be able to pick up two points extra credit to help you with some of the video quizzes you may not done as well on. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be giving a lot of extra credits on some of the video quizzes that come up. And also, I would like to say that some of the video quizzes that are going to come up in your future are going to be, instead of five questions, they're going to be ten questions. And as we get closer to the final exam, I'm going to put some problems on there or some video quiz material on there that might have four extra credit questions worth two points a piece on there. So don't worry, I'm going to take good care of you. All right, so what do you have to do? You have to finish the video quiz for me, send me your answers, and also finish uh, group worksheet 26. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I hope you have a pleasant day, and uh, we'll see you again for our next group of material that we will be going over very soon, right? Okay. You take care. I'm trying to shut this thing off. Oh, boy. All right. Take care. We'll talk soon.